Hello YouTube. All right, in this video we're going to attempt to uh, remove the carrier, remove the carrier bearings, the pinion bearing. We're going to make a dummy bearing for the pinion, uh, so just so we can set our pinion depth. And then uh, we're going to install the carrier bearings without a press, and uh, install the uh, ring gear with some lock top. <clears throat> oh yeah, and this is my full spool. So these are 410 gears. We're going to take these off and uh, we're going to switch it to a uh, 355 gear, which would be more street friendly and more quarter mile friendly. So we have to get these bearings off. Um, the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to cut these bearings off and that'll just leave this piece inside here. And um, I'm going to get a bearing puller that I bought from Harbor Freight and pull these off. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, and so that's why I keep my small cutoff wheels. Can hardly get a big cutoff wheel in there. But anyway, just like that, I'll need two hands. But I cut through that, and now we can just pull it off, and the needle bearings are going to fall everywhere. All right, that's what we're left with. Now, you can cut through this if you want to. You can cut through it so far and then use a chisel, and boom. Once it, once it pops apart, which it will, if you cut through it and then hit it with a chisel, it'll pop. You know, it'll pull right off. But I've got a puller. Let's just pull it off. Or you can use a press. And there's my Harbor Freight special bearing separator puller set. All right, and I'll put that on there just like that. I'll put it on the outer part. I don't think we're going to be able to get behind that. You know what? We probably could have. Oh well, we'll go off this top ledge. Right there. All right, then these go down inside these bolt holes. And tighten these up once you get it all straight. And I've got a socket that won't fit all the way down in the hole. See how it's like it's beveled right there. Once it starts hitting the splines, it. And I'm gonna put a a board right there. Then we zip this down and should pull it right off. That's what I got. Sockets down in the hole, board. I'm just going to turn this, see if it comes off. I might get an impact for this. Well, that didn't work because I don't have a socket perfect size for that. It just, uh, just kept doing this number where that's beveled in there. If I had one that fit perfect, it probably worked, but so we're going to cut it, hit it with a chisel. The other side's a lot easier, but you got to cut and look, cut and look, and I don't know, see that even that little bitty blade is wanting to touch right there before it goes through back here, but I'm going to hit it with a chisel anyway and see if it'll pop for me. Tell you what, that bearing's on there. This time I set this down in the hole like this and I put this crescent wrench up there. It bent crescent wrench. And look, I don't know if y'all can see that curve, but it's starting to bend the tool too. <laughs> Tell you what. So I did the same thing on the pinion bearing because I need this shim. It come right off. Look, somebody had cut that one too before they went too deep. But hey, maybe if I go in an angle, I can get more. Maybe we should try that. Going at an angle on this one. That one won't pull off. I don't know why. Did the same thing down here and it come right off. Well, maybe the gear wasn't changed, but they changed the bearing for some reason. That's why that cuts in there. They, had, they cut it off. Well, I tried the top and it stripped out my tool. <laughs> Them things are on there, man. See, that one's got a ledge you can get a hold of it without cutting the, the bearings out of it, but I'm glad I saw what they had done on that one where they cut it crooked. So if we cut crook this one, we can cut straight. It's not going to matter because, yeah, they don't have this big piece blocking my blade. So we're going to try to go this way. Let's see if we can't cut it off there. All right, I just grinded. 
chiseled and grinded, chiseled, and it finally broke loose. This piece shot across the room. But yeah, I did get into it right there. So I'm, I don't know. I grinded and then hit it with the chisel, grinded a little more, hit it with the chisel. I tried to go as less as I could. All right, so now I'm just taking a punch and hitting right there and knocking it the rest of the way off. I'm going around a little. Hit it there, go around, hit it, blah, blah, blah. All right, there we go. I got it a little bit right there and a little bit right there. That was it. It'll be fine. We'll send some crocus cloth over it. But yeah, angle is the way to go. No question about it. The only spot I got it doing the angle is right there. And this was where the most meat's at. That was the hardest part to break loose. This down here at the bottom broke loose pretty easy and shot across the room. I don't even know where it went. And then this was still here. But yeah, we got her now. Let's do the other side. Also, when you guys use these things, make sure to lube your threads. The first hit, I forgot to lube the threads. And it did do a number on them. And that might be why it stripped out. But I did lube it after the first hit. But lube your threads. And also on this uh, carrier, for the ring gear, the bolts go into the ring gear. But sometimes those are reverse thread. This one, they're not. This one, they were lefty loosey, but I'm pretty sure the 7.5 rear end, those bolts were reverse thread, so righty to loosen them. All right, doing the other side, we're just grinding and then using the chisel again, beat on it with the big hammer until it cracks. It'll get weak and it'll crack right through the middle, and then you can get it off. Well, I didn't see it crack, but I'm holding this up like this and hitting it with a hammer there, and it looks like it's moving. It is moving. Let's try to beat it off. There we go. Just hitting it on this side. Flip it over, put it through another hole, hit it. It's coming. So you can see where it cracked, but it didn't crack all the way back here. It cracked in the front. This is where all the meat's at back here. But that was enough to get it to come off. And I did get in it a little bit. I mean, that's not gonna bother it. We'll just run a piece of emery cloth over it and make sure it's okay. Yeah, be all right. So now what we'll do is we'll put this in the freezer overnight. And then um, we'll put the bearings in the oven, 400 degrees for 30 minutes. It should slide right down. If not, we can put this right on the lip of the bearings. For instance, this one. We can just put it on the lip and knock it down until it goes all the way down. Hey, there's a spacer. And that's a spacer. I use a solid spacer. I don't use them crushed sleeves. Crushed sleeves are junk. Especially for drag racing, because if it crushes more, it's going to mess up your pinion load, pinion bearing load. So I use these solid spacers, and you just shim them out to where you got enough pressure that when you do your bean top torque wrench, that you're, uh, forget what the numbers are, but when we do that, we'll go over that. So now on this one, we're going to get the new pinion, and I've got an extra bearing. And we're going to run a sanding wheel inside of it and make it to where it'll slip off and on so we can set our pinion depth. But since we got our punching hammer out, let's go ahead and knock this race out. We'll hit it on this side, then on this side, and it'll prop out the front. Then we'll roll it over and knock this one out the same way. I wish those were a little bit longer. All right, we got the bottom one out. Now we got to flip it over and do the same thing to this one right here. It's going to come out towards us. All right, there we go. The other one popped out. Going on the ground right there. And that uh, bottom one was hard to get out. The front one. So I kind of stack these together and beat on that. Not good to bait on your extensions like that, but it worked. All right, we got this race driver's set 
from a uh, Harbor Freight. Let's see how it works. All right, and this is the uh, bearing and gasket and seal kit for the 8.8. .8. It's got um, carrier stems. It's got bolts, crush sleeve, new bolt, front seal, the carrier bearings, and the uh, and the front and back pinion bearing. So that bearing and race are the same, so those must go on the carrier. Then we got a big one and a little one for the pinion. So this is going to be the one that goes in the front. So we'll put this one in. And then we'll put that one in the back where the carrier is at from the carrier side. That one goes in the front. We're just putting the races in for now. Alright, I found which one of those fit. I put it on the handle. Which one of these fit? the uh, race the best that one fits the best so we'll knock her in all right I match the old race up with the new race and then uh put this on there beat it with a big hammer that started to go crooked on me <clears throat> i've done this a time or two so i know the straighter it goes the, the easier it goes in so I had to use my punch to straighten it out a little bit. And then once I got it straight, put that back on there. Wham, wham, it went all the way in. You'll hear a, you'll hear a difference when it bottoms out. You'll hear a thud sound and it bottomed out. But uh, we're gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing to the other side. Gotta find this one that fits. Match up the old bearing to the new bearing. Make sure they're the same size and and uh, do it from the inside and knock that one in. All right, kind of in between sizes on this big one, but this ledge does not stick up higher than this, so I'm gonna go with the bigger one. All right, and just like that, both races are in. You'll hear a thud when they go in, but. You might want to take a reference picture of where they're at on the ledge, but, but you can see that one's up against the ledge. We can probably see that from the other side if we flip it over. But now, a Timken Baron came with the kit, and then I bought this Baron at O'Reilly's. This is the Pinion Baron, uh, the one that goes down by the pinion gear itself. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to use a sanding wheel to sand this out so it'll easily slip on and off the pinion so I can set my pinion depth with the pinion shims. And I'm just going to use a drill and this little sanding flap wheel. Alright, there's my new gears. 39 teeth, 11 teeth, which comes to 5.45454545555 or something like that. But uh, yeah, there we go. So first thing we need to do, set up our dummy bearing, sand this out, where this will slide straight on and off, just enough to where it'll slide off and on. And that'll be our dummy bearing so we can figure out what shims we need here for our pinion depth. Now I use this little vise. I wish I had it bolted down, but I just clamped the bearing in there. And it took a lot of sanding. I don't know how long I was sanding on that thing. All right, now it slides off and on, see? Slides all the way down. Sometimes I have to get a screwdriver in there to pry it off, but it comes off. Put the, uh, the differential um, into the... Uh, refrigerator overnight and then in the morning we'll heat the bearings up put the bearings on put some loctite on the bolts put the ring gear on all right the full spool carrier has been in the refrigerator all night and i did 400 degrees for 30 minutes on the bearings let's see how this works well i was wanting y'all to see me try to slide that on there because i took it out of the freezer in the oven but I had to have two hands to do it. And it didn't slide right on. So it started. 
And then I took this and beat it down. And then I took the trusty punch and just went around the edges. Here, 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 until it bottomed out. And you can see it did bottom out. I think that works easier on the pinion bearing. As you noticed before, it was easier to get the pinion bearing off. I'm gonna hit this one a few more times. It looks like it's down over here, but still got a little space. Yeah, I think this one's all the way down though. Yeah, that one's all the way down. This one's got a space somewhere. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll hit on this one a little bit more. But yeah, I think that'll do it. Just hit on this one a little bit more. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put the ring gear on. Um, make sure your surfaces are nice and flat. If not, you can hit it with a flat file. But I don't feel anything. So let's go ahead and slap them together and try to line up the holes as we do so. And the kit came with some red Loctite. So we'll put that on our new bolts. All right, I tightened up this one and this one back and forth until it pulled it too. And then I hand tightened the rest of them. Now we're gonna torque it in two waves. And we're gonna do a crisscross pattern. Or something like that. Whew, that wasn't easy holding that and torquing it at the same time. All right guys, this video is getting a little long, so we'll go ahead and make this part one. And then part two of actually be putting the gears in the uh, in the rear end.